Hey guys, what's up? It's Elaine here with Neon Owl, and we are here with Miles, aka Sci-Fi. How's it going? Doing well. How are you? Good. Good. And of course, we have Josh in the house today. Um, the both of us will be interviewing him because we were fighting over who was going to do it. <laughs> so here we are. So last night we had you come play at our Dance Give Inspired charity show. How was that for you? It was a blast. I wasn't. Uh... I wasn't sure what to expect in San Jose, but it was uh, it was awesome. I'd never played in this area before, so I had, I had a good time though. Yeah, so we, um, Josh and I actually first caught Miles at Enchanted Forest. This was a few months back. Right, yeah, a couple months July. Back. Yeah. Um, we caught and played three sets. It was amazing. Josh can tell you guys about that. <laughs> yeah, each set actually was kind of better and better. And so we knew we wanted to somehow do something together, have him come play at a show, so. Yeah. Here you were. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here it is. How was that process for you, by the way, to get asked to end up headlining for the final night? Well, like, kind of like what you were saying, it's kind of bittersweet, you know, because at the same time, I really wanted to see Minnesota play. I've been, mm -hmm. you know, a big fan of his music for a long time, um, but that was a really awesome opportunity. And I actually got asked to play that set as I was leaving. I was like about to leave the festival. No yeah, way. Because so he wasn't going to be there. I was. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I, no. I was gonna. I was like gonna go home that night. But I'm really glad I ended up staying another night. Yeah. yeah. And uh, had a had a really good time. So you were telling me about this new album you have coming out. Can you give totally. us a little sneak peek, a preview? Yeah. What it's going to um, be like? Yeah. So I started. I started working on an album uh, about February of last year, and. I, I usually will write a body of work and it's like five tracks, you know, with some remixes or, you know, it's like more on the EP sort of level. So I, with this album, I wanted to do a full length album. And, you know, I'm a huge science fiction fan mm -hmm. and I like reading science fiction and watching yeah. science fiction movies. Um, so I like, with this one, I wanted it to resemble some of my favorite science fiction movie soundtracks from kind of like the flow of the album it's a gapless album where all of the tracks flow into each other but you could listen to each track like on its own mm -hmm. and it would still sound like a cohesive track you know with it so um that's gonna be coming out in 2017 which i'm really excited about <laughs> i know right that's mark my calendar cool. right now yeah <laughs> do you it, use a lot of non-edm to inspire your music yeah yeah with this one i um actually used a lot of sounds from nature and a lot okay. of different uh sounds that you know you take a sound that is kind of recognizable and then completely morph it into something else i was actually experimenting with these awesome sounds from these tribes that use their surrounding uh music they, they use their environment as like the core for the music they make so there will be like monkeys screaming and grasshoppers and stuff and they will incorporate that like they will make the music around the sounds of their own environment and stuff. That's so ridiculous. I've been like really inspired by like uh, learning more about like music in like an environmental context. Yeah. yeah. No, I can't wait. I listened to a, a little bit of it and I can't wait to hear the rest. Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. oh rub, rub it in. That's cool. <laughs> no worries. I'll just keep playing the guest mix over and over nice. again to hold me yeah, over until. Yeah, neon out guest mix for sci-fi. <laughs> so who has been some of your bigger musical influences? Well, um, let's see. That's a good question. Like I, I've gone through a lot of different stages as an artist where when I was really first starting to get into music, like Tipper was a really big inspiration for Ooh. me. Because it's just that's, like, that's, that's I shit. just saw him in the first yeah. time and bloom and he blew my it's mind. so good. He, you yeah. know, and his sound design is so, it's so ridiculously on point. Uh, but I try to get a lot of influence from a lot of different types of places. I'm a big like, uh, Melodic dubstep fan, so I really like Seven Lions a lot. All of his cinematic. Um, now we're on her side. Now, now yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. So it's kind of like I, I I draw a lot of influence from his work as well as um, it's more on the like noisia uh, kind of tip. But yeah, I I try to you know I've been like involved in a lot of different music scenes and dubstep mm -hmm. and um, bass music. I guess that's not, it's not very diverse, you know, yeah. a, di a diverse yeah. group of music from right. drum and bass to dubstep. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I would say, yeah, I'd say those two especially, like Bass Nectar and, you know, he's been, he's been such a, 
a dynamic artist throughout the last decade. Yeah. You know, if you listen to some of his older work, it sounds extremely different from his newer stuff. Oh, completely. You know, and he's he's like evolved as an artist through the times, and it's really inspiring to see him like work with all of his fans and be like really up close and personal with um, with upcoming artists. Mm -hmm. and, and he'll go to artist shows, like he'll go to my friend's shows where my friends are like just kind of coming up in the scene and he'll like go talk to them and like, you know, they'll start communicating and maybe do some shows together and stuff. So it's like, it's really cool to see that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He's definitely someone we really want to work with. Like of that. course, yeah, <laughs> no, he's, he's yeah. tight. When was the moment that you knew you wanted to pursue music and how did you get into it? I got into electronic music. Um, well, I've been like a big fan of electronic music and like movies for years, like The Matrix when that came out and you know, there's just like that, I got into kind of that like cliche like techno electronic music uh. sound and that, and I thought that was like all there was and I, 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 was, I played in punk bands when I was in high school and was doing like, I played guitar and kind of like thrash punk bands, terrible lyrics <laughs> and you know, that whole thing and then I found, uh, I found electronic music through uh, an outdoor event that a good buddy of mine threw up in the Sierra Nevada foothills where they, you know, bring a generator out into the woods with yes. like some lights and a bunch <laughs> of sound and really just throw an awesome party for the night and then leave no trace and clean up everything and act as if nothing ever happened. I love and that part. That was like the coolest thing because I was into punk rock at the time, but this was kind of punk rock in a way because yeah. it was like, you know, screw the system, we're gonna go out there make and do our, our thing, thing, make our own thing. Yeah, it was like, whoa. This, so that was the moment. And I, after I went to that one show, uh, that renegade party, mm -hmm. if you wanna call it that. It um, sounds like a renegade party. I hit up everyone on MySpace that played. Oh, MySpace? Like, no, I was like, this was 2006. Okay, oh, wow. okay, okay, so yeah. years ago. Yeah, so I, um, <laughs> I hit up everyone on MySpace and like tribe.net and all of that and was like, how do I get into this? And everyone gave me all these different sort of answers. So I ended up kind of just uh, started DJing from that, you know? But it was like this immediate moment where I just had one of those nights, you know? It was like, this is it. This yeah. is what I want to do. Yeah. How do you want people to feel, like, if anything, when they're listening yeah. to your music? I want people to, like, get outside of their own head, you know? And kind of, like, go off into and to, you know, yeah. like, like think and get like kind of personal. I want to have a personal connection to the music. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll run into people at music festivals that are like, there's just something about it. I can't put my finger on it, but I feel like connected through the music. And I feel really emotionally connected to the music when I make it. So a lot of it is inspired by like, uh, you know, friends of mine that have passed away or like, like deep, really deep personal stuff. So when I'm like seeking for inspiration, I will put a lot of deep personal energy into it. So I feel like when other people listen to it sometimes, they can sense that and then they can like relate it to their own, their own life. I threw away my camera that like off to the side. I was like, yep, I'm not doing press like yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Unheard of. I, you know, I'm always yeah. working, but yeah. like during that set, like and a couple of your other sets, like yeah. I just put my camera bag like down. People feed off that when I you're putting like, that energy you know, into it. <laughs> yeah, you definitely. There's difference between you know DJs who are putting that energy out there and aren't, and people in the crowd totally feed off that or yeah. don't feed off that. So when you're making a song, do you have a specific emotion or idea right at the beginning or does it kind of develop over time when you're coming up with well, it's it? It's funny like when I try to put a lot of thought into like okay how am I gonna start this song I end up not really uh, it doesn't <laughs> end up going anywhere because I'm putting I'm not like just letting it happen you know okay. so but it is a process of me coming up with an idea and then realizing that I just need to like accept whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. Just let the creativity Yeah, fly. so like that moment of acceptance is really, I feel like the time in which the best music gets made. Yeah. When I'm like, oh, I, you know, I'm just gonna, just gonna give it a shot in some other direction, you know, and just kind of like abandon the original idea. That's when you start to like kind of make some really cool stuff because you're not worried about like what it's supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll like, I'll get really inspired by a movie or hearing some uh, orchestral piece. And I'll just hear like a little melody, like, oh, that should do this. And usually the track doesn't actually 
use whatever that original idea was. It's just inspiration for the next idea. Yeah. Do you have someone that you like play these ideas off of, or like you just come up with this idea and you have one person that you yeah. go to? You're like this per this person's gonna give it to me straight. Like they're not gonna, yeah. they're not gonna bull me. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. I'm actually part of this organization called Producer Social. It's uh we have locations in Santa Cruz, the Bay Area, L.A., and San Diego where you go to the event and get constructive feedback and criticism on your tracks. And it's a lot of like guys that guys and awesome women involved too. Um, one of the cool things about it, I feel, is because it's like really uh, encourages like everyone to come out, um, all skill levels, whatever, just come out, play your music. And um, it's not like uh, what you did wrong or anything, but it's like t people saying like what they felt through the music. Um, but yeah, so I'll bounce some ideas off of the group in the Bay Area that meets. Um, I'll, I'll send some stuff sometimes to friends online, but I don't really do that as much anymore. Is there something that you feel the music industry could use more or less of right now? That's a good question. We're at this interesting time where I feel like a lot of, there's a lot of divisiveness just in general. Um, and one of the cool things about electronic music is it's always been a great way for people to come together. All, you know, races, nationalities, spiritualities, sexes, you know, orientation. Like, it's just all super accepting. Mm -hmm. So I feel like our world needs more of that right now. But um, electronic music, it's a great way for that to happen. But I feel like there's this, like, we need a new listening format in a way. Like the, the delivery of electronic music I feel is gonna change in some way. Not from like MP3, but like on a SoundCloud or Spotify or something like that. Um, a lot of people are turning more towards Spotify and YouTube to listen to music rather than SoundCloud, which we've all been listening to for a long time. Yeah, right. um, so, and I'm still on there like every day. Yeah, yeah that's my go-to. Yeah. But I think, uh, I think electronic music is actually at a healthy, healthier spot right now than it was a few years ago when um, like now there's some like really cool underground scenes that are the response of the like EDM bubble, you know, um, which I, I don't know if it's fair to call it a bubble, but it like there's, there's this a lot of hype and now I feel like people are starting to kind of like find their own thing and do their, their own take on something that they really love. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really encouraging. And I think it's really cool to see that sort of thing happen. You know, you crushed it last night at our show. You know, at Neon Hour, we're all about partnering with artists yeah. and fans to give back. Is there a specific cause or charity or organization that you'd like to see us partner up with in the future? Yeah, um, let's see, um, with the weekly that I was telling you guys about, I do a lot of uh, events where we are very, we will we'll have like fundraisers for different causes. And one, one fundraiser that we had a couple weeks ago was for the Dakota Access Pipeline that's going in up in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And there's all these tribes that, you know, have had their land taken by the U.S. government in the like 1950s. And... Um, through like a series of systematic actions. And I feel like there's a lot of indigenous groups that could use that money to be able to continue their peaceful and nonviolent protesting. So I'm, I'm a huge, huge supporter of anything nonviolent and peaceful that other people you know, are doing to make a difference in the world. Before we let you go, I want to see what is something you're really excited about or grateful for right now? Well, I'm really, uh, right now I'm super grateful for linking up with you guys last summer at Aww. Chan Forest. Um, and Neon Owl's been like so incredibly supportive of my music and I've seen you guys hype up lots of other awesome producers and uh, that's really, really, that's really exciting to see. Um, so yeah, I'm super, super thankful for that and thankful for life and being healthy and stuff. For everyone watching, how can they get a hold of you? Um, they can go to my, my website, sci-fi music.com, P-S-Y-F-I music, um, or I'm on SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter. You can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, we're very excited. Nice. You couldn't tell, but we are. <laughs> no, this is, yeah, it's an exciting, exciting time right now. All right, guys, Thanks so we have sci-fi. Make sure you check out his music. Thanks. Bye.